trying to provide the feed for my family, and this is a good company. So I'm fighting. I'm fighting. Not just I'm fighting for myself, but I'm fighting for my family because this was the decentest company that was out there that was doing a decent lease of purchase where I could feed my family. You telling me you guys will take people with with certain things on their record or whatever it be, and then when I'm kicking in the door, you guys telling me no, and I'm I'm arguing, pleading my case, and I apologize to them, and th that was. 15, 16 months ago, I try to reapply. To What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. And then when I'm kicking in the door, you guys telling me no. And I'm I'm arguing, pleading my case, and I apologize to them. And th that was 15, 16 months ago, I try to reapply. To All right, Paul Hill in the building. All right, man, well, well, welcome to the podcast, man. I... I I appreciate uh, you reaching out to me, and uh, you, you said you got something to something to talk about. But before we get into all of that, man, introduce yourself. You know, say your name, your age, uh, status in okay. trucking, where you from, and all mm -hmm. that good stuff. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Okay, my name is Paul Hill. Um, I, 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 I'm originally from New Haven, Connecticut. I live in Atlanta. I've been in trucking for three years. Um, it's a great field, man. Um, a lot of ups and downs, man. But it's a lot of companies, man, that's really, really, we got to come together, man, as a unit and really do something, man, and, and, and put our foot down, man, because we get treated like like nothing, man. And we the, we the backbone of the earth. Like, without us, man, it's nothing, nothing without us. You know, that's that's the trope. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the quote, unquote, running gag. Right now, you know, we're the backbone of America. Without us, we're, there won't be nothing. We keep America moving. But it don't seem like, you know, people in general really respect any of that. You know, the only, the only, the only thing that they, that they care about is how, when, and whatever the fact that they move, you know. A lot of people don't understand, you know, how logistics work. You know, it's just, yeah. it's all, you know, it's all set in their perception. Same thing with trucking mm -hmm. companies. You know, we, we got a lot of trucking companies out here that, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's doing drivers wrong. And, you know, yeah, here yeah, you yeah. are, Paul, you, you, you saying that, um, that you know we need to come together talk to us man the floor is yours yeah well i mean by that man is we need to put our foot down even with these comp rates and all these lease companies hiding these comp sheets from us and everything man and just letting us just treat us like anywhere anything just like these um love ta and all this stuff man ain't no fool for us we get it we get to these stops man they don't have staffing at, at the Denny's, but it says 24 hours. So we get in there, but Denny's is like home cooked food for us. You know what I'm saying? While we out here, and they be closed or or no staff or this and that. Get somebody that's gonna be reliable, man. We we need that. You know what I'm saying? To help us go on. And the other thing, man, is that we as we can focus on the road, man. You don't know by deteriorating us from all this stuff, cause us to have accidents. Cause we stressed out. We can't get nothing to eat. We ain't doing what we need to do because we focus on everything else. And there's people just doing us any kind of way. We taking it. But then we say to ourselves, let's come together. When are we going to come together? Before Christmas or New Year's? Because it's time. Like, we need to get a, a, a union or whatever the case may be. We all come together. When something don't go right, man, we all talk about it. And, like, we ain't moving until we get what we need to get. We need to put our foot down because without us, nothing's moving. And how these recruiters is treating us, oh, that's a whole different story. How they tell us A, B, and C, what they're going to do. Like, I just got blackballed from a company the other day. I tried to go for VL Trucking. I had an argument with the recruiter. They taped it, and they, it's two years later, and they won't even hire me on the lease purchase because the fact was I had an argument with the recruiter. It was a good company. Not going to talk bad about them. But when you're trying to feed your family and there's not too many good companies out there, all I was trying to do was get my foot in the door. you telling me you take people with this and this on their record. But then when it's producing time, it's a whole different story. Like, they don't give us, they don't, they're not a hundred with us. I'm a little confused, uh, you know, slow it down. I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the story. I'm enjoying myself. But you, two years ago, you you tried to set up with VL Trucking. If that's what I'm trying to trying to figure out. You tried to set up with yeah, them yeah, two right, years sure. ago. You, you, you didn't get with them 
because of an argument with with the recruiter? What what happened between you okay, and the me, recruiter? Let me. All right, let me. T- I'm gonna be slow down because I'm just excited. Uh, so what happened was I had an argument with a recruiter two years ago, about, approximately about two years ago. I just tried to apply for them the last week, and they wouldn't even take. They wouldn't even. They see my number on the phone. They wouldn't even take my calls. They wouldn't even answer the phone. I had I, I reached out to somebody that had some research, and I'm going to them, and he's telling me that they don't want to have nothing to do with me or anything else. Like I had a, a disagreement with a, with a recruiter. Didn't threaten nobody. Didn't do nothing at the time. I was trying to provide the feed for my family, and this was a good company. So I'm fighting. I'm fighting. Not just I'm fighting for myself, but I'm fighting for my family because. This was the decentest company that was out there that was doing a decent lease of purchase where I could feed my family. You telling me you guys will take people with with certain things on their record or whatever case be. And then when I'm kicking in the door, you guys telling me no. And I'm I'm arguing, pleading my case, and I apologize to them. And th- that was 15, 16 months ago. I try to reapply this back last week and put an application in, and they wouldn't even answer my call. I was calling from Thursday to Friday. Wrote no, I um, I emailed, I text, I did everything, and then the guy told me, "Oh, they know it's me on the phone, so they won't even answer." So they blackballed me. So, so two years ago, you you tried to apply for VL Truck, and that didn't go through. So a week ago, or a couple of weeks ago, you tried to reapply with VL Trucking. Exactly. Okay, okay. And you know, of course if you use the same phone number, you know, that's that's how you know that that's how trucking companies keep track of the people uh that calls into them. They you know, they 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 uh they put your phone on file so that whenever yeah. your phone show your phone number shows up, you know, that that'll uh, you know, pretty much jump over to the recruiter that's that's mm-hmm. you know that's supposed to be helping you or or whatever the case it it'll let it'll let a recruiter knows that you are work that you was talking to somebody previously um yeah yeah it's some i mean you know it's <laughs> i mean you know some truck drivers like myself you know we we use multiple numbers you know my main my main number i never give out my ne- my my main number uh i never i never mm. call a trucking company with my main number i never uh you know i always always use the same number for every trucking company that i call but if there's a company that i'm interested in and that i want to get you know get to know a little bit better then i will call them from my regular number because i know i would want to go forward with them but if you call in from mm-hmm. you know like in your situation you know you call from your you know from your number and then you you know two years later you 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 want to you know give them another try and you call them back from your same number but they knew that they had issues with you yeah they they they're not gonna you know they might not answer the call or they'll probably just let it go to voicemail or whatever whatever and that's when you that's when you turn around and be like okay well let me get this number and then let me call him and i guarantee you somebody will pick up the phone and and be excited to to talk to you to get you to come and uh drive for that company all right so that's um so that's vl trucking um and paul you know like i said everything Everything that you just mentioned, everything you just talked about, it's an ongoing thing. It it really yeah. is. We 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 can we can we can talk about this until the cows come home. Is anything going to get done mm-hmm. about it? No, no. no. Unless it uh, the the only thing that I can see that is going to get done is that everybody falls aboard. And what I mean by everybody, mm-hmm. I mean mega carriers, uh, the 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 owner operators that's taking cheap freight, the owner operators that's that's taking regular freight, all of them, mm-hmm. all of them, yeah, need to fall into place. See what 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 we don't understand is, big corporations is going to always 
always find some way to keep it moving. I mean, back mm-hmm. in the, like back in the day when unions, you know, when when there was, you know, bit steel factories, now there's not, but bit steel factories, bit factories, they they would go on strike. They'll put a dent in mm-hmm. the system. But yeah, the 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 corporation always figure out some way to at least keep their company moving marginally by bringing in scab mm-hmm. workers. I'm I'm not sure if you're familiar with that term, but uh, scab, yeah, yeah, scab workers is is workers that you know that they'll find that that that's bold enough to cross the picket line. You know exactly that's bold enough because you know when they you know when the unions get out there they 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 get you know they they put that picket line up and you know they'll you know intimidate the the scab workers from getting in from getting out and all like that but companies would kind of like sweeten the pot for them Mm -hmm. to come in so they can at least get a little bit of work done. Not not at 100% efficiency, but at least they can say, okay, 50% efficiency while we're st- while we're still trying to negotiate with with the union. Now, yeah. the union uh good. You know what I'm saying? The union good. In a sense, of back in the day, there was, there, you know, there was a lot of come together. You had a problem, you go to the union, union handles it. Nine times out of 10, it works in the employee's favor. Eight times out of 10, it doesn't. A lot of companies, a lot of companies started, you know, sweetening their pots and making it more feasible for you to give you here, we'll give you this amount if you don't join a million, I mean, if you don't join a union, or you'll take mm-hmm. this amount. And plus, if you take this amount, realize you're going to have to give union a cut. And then the guy, yeah. and again, and then the guy or the, the potential person that's coming in, like, well, damn, that's such a small settlement that you're giving me and i gotta give a lot you know a large cut to the union just to protect me Hmm. well maybe i will go your route because i will make more money all right well remember when you go that route you don't have the protection of the union meaning that the company could do just about anything they want to do to you 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 get off at five o'clock no sir no, sir, we, we got we got additional work. You need to stay about a couple of hours. But I need to go home. Mm-hmm. No, no, sir. Can't go home. You got we we need you to work. But see, if you was with the union, when five o'clock comes around, no matter whatever would whatever work that they got, you're done for the day. Because you're protected. Yeah. This is the same thing mm-hmm. goes with trucking. You got all of these, yeah. you you got all of these. Uh, you got all of these companies that's offering you this, that, and the third, and they doing you dirty. Yeah. That's, you know, that's something that you pretty much accept. And and to be honest, yeah. you won't know about it until after you get in with them. Yeah, you got the recruiter. The recruiter will tell you everything you need to know. They'll, they'll, they'll sugarcoat everything. But then when you go to yeah. the when you go to the orientation, what? Uh that yeah. wasn't that I wasn't told that. Oh, well, this is what we do. Oh, the recruiter told you you would get a nice tw- uh 2022 T680. But no, you you only get what's available on the lot, which is a 2016 piece of shit. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you set you up for failure. Yeah. Oh, you got to go you you got to go and and recover somebody else's piece of shit so you can so they can mm-hmm. put you in it. 
So everything yeah. you every, everything you said, my guy, I mean, it, it's points. And you're not the only one that that you know that feels that way. I mean, all of us feels that way. Food. But nobody's talking about it and no one's making Excuse me. I happen to be passing. I thought you'd might like some coffee. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. Can moves. All we're doing is throwing bullets in the air, but ain't nobody really ready to do something about this, like how we getting treated. You know what I'm saying? And this, this is what the sad part is. We just, we just go in the corner and go on to the next one. Let them treat us. We never be a voice. Like how many people in BL trucking or all these companies doing people like that? It's blackballing. It's not right. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're mature and you've grown, everybody makes mistakes. I'm pretty sure the owner made a mistake and went off on somebody and had to apologize. But once a person apologized, that's the point of forgiveness. I, I, I humbly apologize to the companies like, hey, I made a mistake. I was a little hot head a little bit. I'm mature now. I even wrote my letter, a little letter or whatever it gets me trying to, you know, because it's not too many good companies out there. You know what I mean? So when I hear Via was a nice little company where you can make money provide because I got my own authority. But people don't understand that authority, you need someone to take care of your paperwork. You need somebody to take care and put you in a better position. Yeah, you make it a whole bunch of money, but you got a lot of fees that you got to pay. When you go up on a good company and you run, you can they can take care of the back end while you take care of the front end. Just worry about driving and getting to the next destination, getting your loads or whatever. And they take care of your IFTA and all that stuff, which is smart. And it cuts your insurance in half. If you're paying two thousand, if you go with a mega carrier or somebody with your lease or with your owner operator, it cuts it down. And I'm learning like you got to make mistakes out here in order to really, really learn this trucking game. And it's okay to say you dropped the ball. It's okay to eat humble pie. But how many pieces of humble pie that you can eat before you be boisterous? And people understand when you're trying to provide for your family and you know what's going on, it's hard to even do that. Let's just bring up this other subject. Super Eagle, they give you the finest of the finest equipment. They let you run rapid, but they rob you. They don't let you see the rock, r- Raycons. They, they, they are the master manipulators of the game. They're called super robbery. They, they, but everyone goes to them, to be honest, because they allow you to run like an animal. They, they fix the clocks. They do all the crooked stuff that people do. So in their mind, they're like, oh, okay. I call Super Eagle the, the, the dope dealers of, of the trucking game because they're master of what they do and they protect themselves. And it's the reason why they never fail because they take their conversations and how they written in the clothes because we all, and just being honest, as African-Americans, we don't read nothing. We just sign. And then there's a clause in there that you got to take whatever they give you. 88%, they get that 15% or 12% off of whatever they give you. But say that low was 16 and they trying to give you a thousand, and then they give you a bull Raycon because they got all these people in positions while they robbing us. And guess what? They got the highest turnover, and we still going. And then these people out here doing all these videos and stuff like that. Come on, man. Come on. They may not be robbing you because you are making them more advertisement. So this time they taking six hundred from me, but being that you advertising, we got to make sure you good. So we'll just rob you for three hundred, but you still getting robbed. And you all here, why can't we all come together and do our own thing? We all, we super ego, super ego, all these lies. Come on, man, I've been there. I've done that. You know what I'm saying? They're good people. They get you what you got to get. But deep down inside, they're robbing us. And we sitting around here like, oh, okay, you know, it's all good. You know, I'm making money. It's not. Yeah, but you could be making a whole lot more. You're making these kids rich. You know. They got trucks up the wazoo. You know, the, it's like, it's like the cake. Right. You don't know what's up under that cake because it got nice frosting. It got a nice decoration. It looks good. It could be it it could be taste good because, you know, you're looking at it. Your mouth is watering. You 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 want to cut into it just to see what it look see what the layers look like. And that's what Super Ego. That's what controversial company Super Ego does. It yeah. it looks good on the outside. They 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 got a whole bunch of advertising. They got a they got a handful mm-hmm. of people that 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 that's in my opinion and allegedly being paid to advertise or 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 you know talk about them. Allegedly, 
But once you cut into that cake and you see that cake is is garbage, you know? Yeah. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people, a lot of newer people, because there's, let's be for real, there, there's, I mean, Super Ego has been in business for a long time. And mm -hmm. it's because of people not saying that they're good or bad, but it's because of people that wants to get that chance of owner operation, of leasing. Mm -hmm. Super Ego mm -hmm. is giving you the opportunity to do that by giving you, you know, by giving you 88% of the load, by giving, by helping you get, in the, get a truck by the end of the, end of three years or four years or forever long that it takes. But then when you guys go over there and y'all sign the dotted line without reading, and a lot of you guys, let's be honest, black or white, y'all don't. Y'all don't. We, we, we don't read the fine no. print. Y'all sign, sign up. Y'all sign up. And then for the first, I'm going to say for the first month, everything's good. They running you. Yeah. You getting, uh, you, you getting money. You going you you going places that you know that's that's making money, and for whatever reason, if you need additional time, allegedly, they 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 can do that for you. But mm -hmm. as as I talked to uh, as I talked to a pr uh, previous dr uh, truck driver, a lot of these cats is coming in with company mindsets. Yeah. And they 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 not they they not leveling up per se to understand what the Raycons is about, uh, what areas that that makes money, what areas that don't make money, what areas that do make money, but you got to figure out how to get out of that area. Businesses comes with with plus and minuses. You're gonna take losses. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna take losses. Lo losses. You're gonna take losses in every business. But with mm -hmm. those losses that you that you doing comes growth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I know going down to Florida is three thousand dollars going in, but coming out of Florida is gonna be half of that or or maybe three quarters of that. Okay, I know next time what I need to do. You see so what let I'm me, saying? Let me let me let me elaborate on the um, on the Florida thing. But people don't know that you have. It's not a point of when you're in Florida. When you get in Florida, you make when you bring the load to Florida, you make the money. But you got to be creative to get out of there, and that's what a lot of people don't take the time to do. Get a couple shorties from Jacksonville or whatever the case may be, a couple shorties, and you can make that money getting out of there, but you got to be willing to stay here for a second, take a couple short loads, and then get towards Savannah or Jacksonville and come out of there. And that's what people, you got to be creative out here. You know what I mean? It's, it's, if anyone came from the streets, you got, it's just like if a police is on one corner, you ain't stop hustling, you just went to a different corner. And we got to take that same mindset when we out here with this trucking because the more creative that you be and the more mistakes you be, the more successful. And a boss ain't a boss until you take a real loss. Mm, facts. I mean, they just think of how, how all these uh, top guys are. I mean, Jeff Bezos. I mean, you know, Microsoft guy. Um, Apple dude. dude you know, uh, Steve Jobs. They all took losses. They, they all took major yeah. losses. You know, and it was and, and it was well documented, at least with Steve Jobs. Look look at how many look at how many felt well how many uh pluses that he can I mean that he got, but look at how many failures that he did before he got to the success where yeah. he was at before he passed. Rest in peace to Steve Jobs. Same thing with uh mm -hmm. same thing with Jeff Bezos and uh, you know, Amazon. Amazon started off as a as a Christian bookstore, look at what it is now. It's the online giant for everything, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? So same, it's, it's the same thing goes with trucking. 
You know, you you're not going to mm-hmm. you know when uh, my my problem with trucking is that I I, I spoke to uh, one of my old school cats. My problem with trucking is everybody makes makes trucking a trend. It's the infomercial. Mm-hmm. Is trucking is the mm-hmm. trucking is the late night commercial that comes on at night that says, you know, why the dude is sitting, you know, sitting watching TV. Remember that guy, you know, he sit there watching TV and you have some type of psychic friends or some dude with a magical book that'll help you make millions. Well, that's what trucking is now. You you got all these you got all these so called influencers that comes on here and over here talking about I can show you how to make you know how to make millions in trucking you know just pay me but see what you guys fell mm-hmm. in to realize is how they make their millions is they making it off of you yeah exactly you know it's the same you know thing, what it's, it's the same. It's, uh... oh, go ahead excuse me i happen to be passing i thought you might like some coffee oh that's very nice of you thank you it's it's, it's funny because trucking is missing the same thing school is and you know what that is ain't no christ in it ain't no jesus in it ain't no ain't no spirituality connected to this and and without that nothing's possible and that's the point Mm -hmm. that's missing with trucking like 99 percent of these accidents and stuff like that happen is from stress not focusing having problems at home and no one's praying no one's doing what they need to do Mm. to get back focused man and and that's the point that's missing just like the schools every you know what i mean everything has a reason in the season and this is Mm. the real reason god is out of a lot of things Mm. facts okay i'll give you that i'll give you that i and um i probably might have to probably might have to agree with you i mean not too many people is going to agree with you to that effect because you know you got a lot of atheists out here and and a lot of people that did at one time put their... You know what that Bible says? Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that I am what? Lord. So one day when they're in a tight situation, they will scream the right name. <laughs> mm. Trust me. For sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Trust me. When sure. that God forbid, an accident happened, the first thing they say is, Lord. <laughs> what do you say? I never knew you. <laughs> you know you what said, I'm saying? Every knee shall bow. You said, you, fast, you said it, you know man. I, mean? I got to give you, you said it fast on that. Every time they get into a, every time they get in an accident, the first thing that come out of their mouth is like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Save me. Save me. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? I never knew you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, um, but exactly. it's just about being humble, man. But I just really think, man, with you and um, Mother Trucker, I think you guys got a powerful po- uh, podcast. I think you guys are really trying to change the game. I just think that us truckers, man, we need to get together, man, have meetings, man, have some prayer, man, and really strategically lock this market down for us, man, and really, really get what we need and what we deserve, man, because without us, man, there's no food on the table. There's no toilet paper on the table. There's nothing without truckers. But we don't know the power we have because we're chasing a bag. If you know anything about money, if you get money, you don't have to chase money. Money will chase you. You just got to be right. I don't worry about money. I worry about what I'm going to do with money. You know what I'm saying? And right now, if we're going to be in this game, we need to. you can't do it alone. And that's what the problem is. Everybody's greedy. Everybody's hungry. But guess what? When you got resources, no one wants to share them. Like, you got an open podcast to share what you want to share. Let people know what's going on. Flag these companies. Start making noises. And so these people can say, well, you know what? We can't keep on doing this because guess what? If we do this, we're losing 15 drivers based upon the situation with Paul or based upon the situation with Erica. We, their numbers is increasing while we sitting around here decreasing. You feel what I'm saying? But they still getting what they need to get. So there's no effect. They lose a Paul, and ain't nothing. We'll get 10 more. But if we start losing 15 or 20 or these brokers – don't get nobody to move these loads, and, and they're sitting there with these load boards. They got to come off of that money. But it is, it's like you said, I'll do it for, I didn't want $3, but you, you so hungry and ambitious, you're going to take one seventy. You You messing up the game, and you don't even know it. That's just like when nickels came in, when people were selling dimes. Now you want to sell nickels. You're messing up the game. You know what I'm saying? You, we we got to come together, man. That's the only way this thing is going to resolve. Only thing we're going to make some noise and let these people hear our voice as we got to find a way to all come together. I don't care what complexion you are because everybody bleeds the same way. We need to just come together. Whatever race you is, it doesn't matter. 
We need to come together as one and knock on these doors and have a voice and and and, and let these people know we ain't tolerating it no more. You ain't just giving us peanuts. Man, before you, when the Chuckling game was so quiet, they was giving up this money. But now so many people, hey, they got so many options, they give us what they want. And like, you take it or not. If you don't take it, driver B will take it. D, or these recruiters, we'll tell them whatever. We get them here, and it's boom. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's a trap. Everything is a trap. But when are we going to close the trap up and walk on it like we need to walk on it and grab each other hand and pull us across? If one person know about a good decent company, share it. You know what I'm saying? You got some information, share it. It's okay. It's okay to pull out your laundry. It's okay to put your, your dirt out. It's okay because we all learn it. And you, your situation, we don't understand that whatever you go through ain't even for you. It's for someone else to help them. But we so selfish and self-centered. We got to stop that. We got to, everybody saying, oh, trucking this, trucking that. What are we going to do about it? Everybody saying this and that. What are we going to do about it? Let's have a meeting. Let's have some prayer. Let's, let's change the game for life where it can be every, everybody can eat and feed their family because we out here every day. It's a dangerous situation. We got a family at home. Come on, man. We need to make money because we are on this road. So these companies, man, just got to, you know what I'm saying? We got to do it, bro. Paul, man, thank you very much for coming on uh, to the podcast today, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, powerful, powerful conversation. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, yeah, I, you know, I, hopefully it, it will resonate with uh, with some people. But like I said before, man, I mean, I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer or anything like that. And I'm going to try and keep the positive moving. But how how it is in modern trucking right now, I, you know, I, I, I got to see it. I got to see it. I, I would like to see it. I want to see it. Uh, will it ever happens? I don't know, but I do agree with you. I, re- I, re- I do agree I re- with you, and I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. No problem. I appreciate you so much, man. If the drivers want to get together and really talk about some things, man, try to find a proper way to contact me. Is it okay for me to get my email out? So yeah, go ahead. Want to talk about this? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go I ahead. just want to make sure. Paul. Uh, I, I respect you, bro, and I'm humble. You know what I'm saying? I don't never want to do nothing out of order for nobody because this this is the only way it's going to get out. Paul Hill 940 at yahoo.com. That's Paul Hill 940 at yahoo.com. If you guys want to talk or whatever, we come up with a solution or whatever. But, you know, I'm, I'm humble and I'm ready, you know, so let's talk. Like I said, Paul Hill 940 at yahoo.com. You can email me. And we can sit down and talk, man. Let's change the game. Let's change the world. That's All right? what's up, man. I appreciate, I appreciate you, man. It. All right, man. You have a good day. Stay safe out there, my guy. And and uh, let's uh, let's uh, re up uh, at a later date. I sure will. I'll keep in contact with you. Have a blessed day. All right, now. Big G's got it locked.